What's going on guys? Uh, it's Fun Guy here in Pulses. It's Fun Guy here and um, today I'm just doing some, um, working on some custom collectibles. Um, just recustomizing um, some Nerf guns and everything like that. Just for some props at like Comic Con or um, just for like a cosplay or anything like that. So right now I'm just uh, recustomizing a Nerf gun. Not for any reason, just because I feel like it and because I never know when it's going to come into handy again. Because I never know when it's going to come in handy again, so... Me new. It's my cat, guys. It's just like trying to climb up my leg and, like, it hurts because she's using her claws. But, yeah, I'm just sitting around here just, uh, customizing some custom collectibles. So I thought I'd hang out with you guys for a bit. Thought I'd hang out with you guys for a bit. And I'm watching some cosplay Chris, and he's doing some custom collectibles as well. He's actually, um, what's inspired me to start my own um my own little custom collectible thing and um i've just been doing it ever since so yeah we're gonna i'm gonna continue on this and we're gonna continue and uh, i'm gonna share the link with a few people who i know don't watch right now because they probably have nothing better to do or because they just want to watch let's go in here and do this facebook messenger It's not taking me to where I want to go. Or is it? Yeah, here it is. Alright. So I'll send there. I'll send there. I'll send... Maybe. Not really, though. I'll send... There. I'll send there. Um... I'll send there, and yeah, send. All right, so uh, like I said, just sitting here working on some custom collectibles and watching uh, Cosplay Chris, who once again, he's inspired me to start my own, um, to start doing my own custom collectibles, even if it's not just for cosplay, even like just for um, display and everything. When I do the Captain Cold uh, final reveal, then uh, you guys will see the, the cold gun that I've worked on and it was inspired by Cosplay Chris. He's inspired me to make my own code gun instead of just buying one off the internet because it's cheaper, because you don't have to wait for it to ship or anything like that, and you can just grab it and not have to worry about any issues because you know how you built it. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. So we're just uh, going to keep this thing rolling, whatever you guys want to talk about. A World War II gun on a plane. If not, I'm sorry. Please correct me in the comment section. I'm not Hold on. There's one more thing. The whole history of the there's one more thing I gotta do. I gotta go to Facebook. Uh, Facebook, where are you? The original prop. I do know it was uh, like a Russian gun. There was a scope put on and then the booster pommel. Then we're gonna go in on the handle and just make a few scratches just so it's there ready for the uh, handle. Now, once that's all done, we're gonna... Of course, I have to press space bar to pause it. My niece has me doing that, guys. Like, like she looked at me the other night, and she comes up to me. She goes, Uncle. She's only two years old. She goes, Uncle. Uncle. I'm like, what? She goes, I'm like, what? All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to make a few Alright, now, we can continue, if this thing can play, there it is. Alright, go ahead and, oh, that's because it's a flat, that's the flathead, not the Phillips I was using. Some metallic silver and then dull it down and weather it with a nice black wash. And then just general weathering all over, guys. And seriously, that's it. I've left the batteries in with the sound effects, so I kind of think that's cool. It's a simple process, yet nice. an effective process. So, with that, let's get to it. Alrighty, so this is just a tiny little hobby screwdriver that I'm just hobby screwdriver. Uh, that is not a hobby screwdriver, that is a flathead screwdriver, dude. Force the fucker out, but there we 
but Australia. it looks like a flathead. Just drilling the holes in the vents of the uh, booster pommel, and that was easy done. Just take your time, because you want to make it look neat and flush. There we go. I've got the barrel inserted, guys. I kind of want to use some of these napkins to, to clean it out. And this is just attacking the handle with a Stanley knife. I just uh, laid out some scratches from what I saw. This is just uh, and a napkin I'm going to tear in half. And I'm going to go ahead and, and clean this barrel out nice real nice. Sprays, nice and neat. Nice even Make it look nice and good. An on each side. So as we go, flip it over after about half an hour and make sure it is dry. Make sure it's not tacky because you don't want that adhering to the MDF board. There we go. And once the nice and clean. Cured, it's time to lay down some All right, so now it's, now tar it's time to start assembling uh, the gun again. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to start the sanding process right before I prime it. I'm going to use some more of these napkins to clean off the inside, make it look good and everything, make it look great. And this, um, this priming is going to take a little bit, so uh, you guys just going to have to bear with me before I can actually get to uh, assemble this thing all the way and then reprime it. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just cleaning it, making it look good, even, uniform, so I can put anything I want, like some, some LEDs or anything like that. I'm going to take some, um, I'm going to take some chrome from Model Masters. I think I have it on the desk. No, I don't have, I think I do. No, it's all the way on the other side there. So that's what we're going to be using to after the primer has cured, which is going to take a couple of days. But you can, uh, I like to let it dry for 30 minutes on each side. That way it's uh, it's dry to the touch, but I don't I like to actually start weathering it until the um, until the spray paint has actually had a chance to cure all the way. Alright. Even though it's sped up, I'm quickly whispering over even in real time just to really get that wood grain effect. So now we're right gonna there. go ahead and um Put this gun back together so we can go ahead and start the sanding process. And I'm glad this is like an old Nerf gun head lying around because um, because the screws stay in there because of how rusted it is. It's very rusted, so the screws stay in there. As you go, this stuff goes on beautifully. Make sure to do the inside of the pommel too. You don't want it. You want it looking realistic. And the final step is just to add a coat of clear gloss, and now it is time for, for the, the final reveal. reveal. You know, what are you doing? The cat, guys. You know, if you're going to come on the chair, you're going to stay down there. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and reassemble this thing. Uh, unfortunately, there is no, like, cocking mechanism, so that's kind of a good thing, and, um, since the gun has been sitting there all those years, uh, it's got, like, this little, it's got, like, this, this coloration, which I really like, I really want to leave it on there, so, after I sand this down, I'm gonna go ahead, um, tape off all the areas with the discoloration, I'm gonna tape off all of that, and I'm gonna go ahead and start priming. I'm going to tape off that with some masking tape and we're just going to go ahead and get in there and just start priming this thing down.
We'll go ahead and put the screws so back in, guys. Quality, guys. This was a severely easy build. If it wasn't for work, I would have had this done in a day, but it took me three days. The process is severely simple. This is something that you could use if you had a last-minute idea for a convention, if you wanted to do a hard Solo cosplay. I would eventually like to revisit this piece and actually put a proper working scope in there, so I may consider that down the track. Hope you guys are well. Hope, Hope you, guys you guys are happy. happy. Be, be merry. Be merry. And until, until next time, kids, please always remember, remember cosplayers do your best. Alright, so we'll go ahead and put this screw back in here, guys, and reassemble the gun. And then I'm gonna go get that masking tape, uh, mask off. Well, I'm gonna go get the sanding paper, the, um, sandpaper. Start sanding down all the logos and, like, like the Nerf logo and all the legal golf, all the, everything right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave this logo on here. Because I really like this, uh, Nerf Strike Elite Insignia. It gives it, like, a, um, a kind of tactical look, so... When, when I go ahead and prime it and I start weathering everything, I'm going to go over this with like uh, Model Master's Copper or Model Master's Chrome Silver from Astolium. No, from, from testers and just go ahead and give that some color because that looks great. Wow. There we go. Got one of the screws in, and now I'm just screwing in the rest of the screws that actually stayed in the gun. Most of these screws stayed in, so it's very easy to just assemble it. All right, here we go. And like, I love. How, I can't. I can't wait to see how this thing is gonna turn out. Once I tape off the discoloration, I start priming it and making it look really used, really weathered. Um. Ah. Uh, I assembled this thing and then I realized I don't have the trigger in there. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think it looks good without a trigger like a space gun or, or something like that? Just let me know, guys. But in the meantime, I'm going to get the trigger back. And I think I dropped the screw. No, I'm good. In the meantime, I'm going to get that trigger back. My phone went off. Shut up, phone. Oh. Someone asked me to come in and work their shift today. But it's still 5 o'clock, so I have plenty of time to go ahead and start priming this thing and taping off all the areas where I don't want paint to get and let's see I cannot type. I cannot type at all, guys. I'm I'm not good at that. I'm going to go back and get that trigger real quick. You guys hang tight.
I'm back. Soon the gun and the bullets are pretty much complete. Now the final step, you guys know it, is a base or a stand. So what I've done is I have my mate Miles who owns a CNC machine. Now for those who don't know what a CNC machine is, it's essentially just like a router that can cut through pieces of wood, metal, perspex. So I found the Rebels logo All right. on Google. I'm back, guys, this and unfortunately the trigger wasn't there. I think my roommate might have thrown it away on accident or it might have popped out and then it's more on the floor. Um, I've got six of these bad boys. So for the final look, I'm just going to be placing the gun resting like so with three screws drilled in at the back to house the bullets. Now in terms of color, we're going to be priming this with the gray primer from us only because MDF All right. is quite porous and it's quite dry. So it's easier if we go the route of priming it first. We're then going to cover the entire logo with a nice cherry gloss red. I'll then be going around the trim with a nice black. And then we're just going to add a coat of clear gloss and seriously, that's it. We're on the home stretch. So with that being said, let's get to it. All right, let's finish assembling this thing. Oh, where's my screwdriver? All right, so we have a few screws missing. That's mainly because I took them out because, uh, well, they were the only screws that would come out. So we have a screw that goes here, but I don't think it goes here. Maybe it does, I don't know. But there are essentially a few screws missing because this gun is so old, so I just decided to grab it and just do a, um, a collectible on it. So, yeah. Spy music. Alright, so the screws that I had left, the screws that I were able to get out of the gun that didn't come out by themselves, um, since there's a few missing, I strategically placed all the screws of where I want them to go, but I do have a junk box with some more, um, with some more screws in it that I might be able to use for this, hang tight. Okay guys, now this is my junk box, and some people would say I collect way too much junk, but there's a good reason, because I'm always using it. Alright, so let's see what I got in here that I can use. I have a ton of stuff in here that I can use to pimp out this gun, make it look pristine, make it look weathered, make it look like a real functional gun that has just been weathered, that has just been beat up so many times. I even wrote my college essay about him. The reason I said all that was because I realized as I grow older, people view my admiration of Mr. Wayne a little differently. I've been looked at as weird by a lot of people for being a high school senior who likes to watch Batman all the time, or as a bunch all of Batman right. stuff, or even dresses like him. I even get awkward looks from my own families at times. My aunt gets uncomfortable with anything I do relating to Batman, and I'm even afraid to oh, okay. up my girlfriend we go. who accepts my hobby but isn't into it as me. It's because of all this all right. I've kind of been detoxing from him. I still watch Batman so, movies and YouTube videos. And I'm I got this switch series, that I can really strategically glue on there somewhere, make it look, you know, really, make, it, make the gun look really beat up, make the gun look like... Maybe something futuristic, maybe something space. Um, let's see. I know many adults in the DC community are able to be themselves, but seeing a man like you who isn't afraid All right, I'm going to get the scissors and go ahead and cut this. This is the first time in weeks that I've actually wanted to put the mask on again. You help me realize that no one's opinion. All right, here's the uh, the the first read that email and. 
to properly answer that, Eli, for anyone else that's in the same conundrum, I was there. I used to be in that mindset. If you try to make everyone else happy with your happiness being at risk, then you are just going to have the worst life. You're going to be miserable. You're going to look back on your All life. All right, so here's the switch, you guys. done things differently. Eli, like I said, I used to be in the same position. I used to hide my geekiness. I really didn't talk about it to anyone. I didn't really flaunt it. I didn't put it out there. I didn't really embrace it. And this is one of the reasons why I started this channel. I wanted to get out there. There's the switch, guys. It's amazing. It's embracing who you are, what you love, and what your passion is. And you've got to understand, you will always have your critics, no matter what you do in life. Wherever you He's don't speaking know truth, guys. In this case, All right, game, so either I want to take this whole switch and just take it somewhere, uh, glue it on there with uh, with some Loctite, something similar, and yeah, that are, that can actually work well. Actually, let's see. I, I just got like an idea. So. You will be. So that being said, thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you are well. Hope you are happy. Be merry. Be, be silly. silly. And, and until next, next time, gigs, please always, always remember, remember cosplays. Do best. He said it. He said it better. I said cosplays do it best. He said we all do it best. That's one of the reasons I like that specific video. Ooh, this is one of my favorite ones he did. Uh, the Force Awakens, the Tie Fighter makeover. Um, it's amazing how he did this. But the screw won't come out. This one will though, because it came out originally. What's happening, my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles. Now today, we're not going to be pimping something out. We're going to be destroying something. We are going to be destroying the Hasbro Force Awakens. That's a huge Tie Fighter. Now I got this on clearance from Toys R Us because it was missing the pilot. I got it for dirt cheap. I don't need the pilot for what I want to do today. So usually, you know, put some washes on it, give it a nice new paint job, do some highlights. I will be doing that, but we're also going right. to recreate the crash site so we can... Force Awakens at the beginning of the film. I don't know. I just thought it would be really cool just thinking outside the box, and it's a lot of fun. Like, I've seen screenshots, and I've seen some amazing fan art. I just think it looked really badass with a nice dynamic base, dragging through the sand with all parts scattered behind it. So uh, it was hard to take this thing apart the first time. Of wing missing and just dragging behind the actual crash site. So what I'm going to do is... Alright, so we got it apart now. So what I'm thinking is just to have fun with it, just to get this switch, if it'll fit through. Uh, if it was a bit bigger, I'd fit it through, but I, and I don't have a Dremel. So maybe access, use this little access port to put the switch in there. It's going to be similar to K2SO where I will be using some trowel on so I can really drag it into the base and then I'm going to cover that with sand and then char the sand to make it look like one big charred trail. And the added bonus is whatever I cut off and whatever is used as excess and spare, I can mount in the sand to make it look like bits of debris hmm. that are just scattered right up to the site itself. Really excited about this one. It's different. It's um, going to be a lot of fun. With that being said, let's, let's get, get to it. it. All right, so right now, just trying to figure out what I'm going to do okay, with this so little switch before, because it is exactly it's something that I, I'm just the looking in the junk box the right here. I have a lot of miscellaneous parts because I'm always using them for, for prop torch, making, torch, for torch, anything like that. So um, what I'm thinking is I'm going to worry about my gimmicks and switches after I sand it down and after I primed it. Then I can figure out what I want to do with the switches, where I want to put any gimmicks like that. Um, where I want to put any screw holes, any legal, any anything that I want to do to this gun. I'll just think about that after sanding it and priming it. Okay, now that I'm letting the wing kind of cool down and then set in place, I'm going to go about cracking random sections right. of, the, uh, of the window here. And all I did was drill holes in whatever area I want there to be, cracked glass, shattered glass. I'm just going to get these tin snips and just very if I can just snip in.
into the drill If this can, like, just kind of gives the illusion that the, the glass go, has, uh, if this can, like, snap back into where it was before, the crash. this would be great. Alright, there so we go. Far, so pretty damn good. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. And actually what worked out in my favor is that the kind of chunked up melted plastic from when I used the Ryobi rotary tool to cut these pieces out it's kind of melted. really gives the effect that it's just been ripped apart aggressively. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna do a nice wash of the entire thing. Alright, like I said, this thing is really hard to come apart and it's hard to put back together. Like so I'm gonna go so ahead and see if it'll go back together the way it was now. All these parts of the wings here. Very happy with how this turned out. And that was completely winged. Now, just quickly, I'm going to get this sandpaper sponge and just start to sand away some of this red paint. Because from what I can see, the red paint nope, has been nope, it needs to come apart again. Charred away, and it's just exposing the black kind of metallic understructure. Like I said, we're going to do a black wash. Like I said, this gun is very old. This, this, this is a retaliator that came out before this retaliator. Um, this one I'm going to be recustomizing it too. It's got a lot of weight to it because of all the internals that are there. I'm thinking I'm going to leave this a firing nerf gun whenever I get ready to do whatever I'm going to do with it. I'm not sure yet. These are the off cuts from the wing. I'm going to be utilizing these as scattered debris leading right up to the crash site. I did melt this part of the wing just to really bend it, warp it out of shape. But it's great. Like I will be doing a wash on these and doing the uh, charred areas as well but it's just going to really add to the realism of this piece mm. alright so this gun is not trying to go back together the way it was the first time but okay, I'm fixing it right now right, there it is some more master silver and we're going to dry brush it over all the details all over the entire TIE Fighter. And what that will do is just bring out the highlights of all this beautiful detail on the piece itself. All right. And just we'll go ahead and reassemble it. That whatever the finish was on this TIE Fighter has just been ripped away. Uh, especially where we've got beams that have been completely ripped off. We want that kind of raw metal look going on. And you don't have to be neat, you know, just be ruthless with it, guys. So... Do that all around and for the other side too. And you can see already, look at that. Look at all the beautiful highlights and details it brings out. It's just, it really brings the piece up a notch. Same thing on the inside. We're just going to lightly yep, just go around like so. And you see those details being highlighted and picked up instantly. Now the same goes for the main body of the TIE Fighter, but we're just going to do very quick kind of, there's been an impact that's just gone straight over the body itself. That looks great. And just make sure you've got Stop. next to little to no paint at all on the brush because too much it's just it's going to ruin the look and the appearance and the illusion that this is exposed. There we go. Okay, now that all the dry brushing is done, it's time to strategically place these pieces on this piece of chipboard. So this is 40 centimeters by 80 centimeters. So all right. the plan is we're going to hot glue everything in place. I do so we got everything. I just need to put one so screw notice. strategically kind of somewhere on the, the gun. I'm thinking about this middle area right here, if it'll go so in. Everything is hot glued in place. Do, that keeps it from coming so apart. Part a, part B, which is a much more thicker resin. So yeah, it's keeping it from coming apart. There we go. So the gun is fully assembled again. So I'm gonna go get the sandpaper sure so we can start sanding this. You know, this is a crash site. Everything is severely Let me uneven. See. I want two grooves where the wings have dug into the sand. We're then gonna be doing some charring. Everything, just making it look nasty, just so it matches the nastiness of all these pieces. I'm going to send the link. More. Messenger. Send. Now you can see I've made the grooves in the foam where I'm going to make out as if it's just, you know, the track All right, that so led to and then comes to a complete stop here. Got a piece of debris here. Now, if you take a look up here, this is the trowel on. Um, I'm just experimenting with it just to make sure it cures properly on the foam. The only thing is, I don't have much left and I don't want to spend any more money on it because, you know, with custom collectibles, we want to try and do it on the cheap. 
and still make it look good. So I may have to just get some builder's bog from Bunnings, which is cheap. You get like a big tub of the stuff. So I'll see how this goes. I'm going to use up this last remaining bit here, most probably to build up the areas where the tide fire itself is lodged in the sand. So as long as I can get that done, I'm happy. I also do have to go along here and seal up this area and blend it in. So ideally, I would like some nice black trimming. All right. So here, just, I'm going to you know, like a nice I'm going to get that sandpaper so we can start okay, sanding so this. What I've got here is some Ultra Cal 30, which is a high strength gypsum plaster. Now, what I'm basically going to be using this for is to fill in all the areas that need smoothing and softening so they're not so harsh and it gives the illusion of sand and then I'm going to go back over them with the trowel on 60 because I'm limited with trowel on it's going to be easier to cover up the areas that require some smoothing with ultra cal 30 because I have a all right, here we go. and it dries to a very so what I've got here is um, some sandpaper I bought a while back when I started my Captain Cold gun um, um, it's just going to be added strength so basically you know the grooves down here and obviously the tracks that run along here and surrounding around all the pieces this will be used just to make it look a bit more natural okay so here is the ultra cal right. 30 so um this is some areas. 80 grit sandpaper that's, i believe uh, yes 80 grit uh, and it's from color. 3m it's the pro grade precision sandpaper so it's a very fine sandpaper to help me get rid of this logo really really quick like um, if it, if, um, if I got any finer sandpaper than this, it would just be like a sponge, and it, too much, so it would just, you can see there, it would just kind of ruin it. So, well, so what I'm doing is I'm just cutting off a section, so just um, I'm just cutting off a section of it that, that I can use enough to help me sand out those logos and make it really, really smooth. So, as you can see, now I'm starting to sand away the Nerf logo and probably the legal bullshit that is right here. I'm not sure. Um, Alrighty, so I've let everything dry overnight. And check this out. This is the trail on that has been laid over the Ultra Cal 30. And because there's moisture, obviously, still in the Ultra Cal. It has made the, uh, the trail on I'm going to say, want to watch? I can set. Everything is set. But this has turned out really good. I kind of had an inkling this was going to happen, but not everywhere. And this has worked out and in my favor here we because go. I want oh. this uneven surface. I don't know if you guys can see it behind the chair. After all, this isn't going to be perfectly laid out sand. You know, you got to have a now sense of realism. This. So, now that everything's dry, the next step so is we're just sanding it out. Sand like, these three little screw, these three little molded screw holes, I don't want there to be... I'm just standing out. And look at this. this. Is last me a good couple of uh, custom collectible bases. So what I'm gonna do? Um, there's no need to explain, guys. You just gotta get a brush, get a PVA glue, lay it down where you want sand to adhere. There will be some see, sand. See how that Nerf logo turns white after you sand it out? I mean. That sand, would look nice if I wanted the Nerf logo here. to still be on here, but I don't want it on here. You can see outside, um, I just want it to be... It's still raining. It's quite cold. I want it to be so gone. Like, I want it to be completely smooth. That way, um, that pr when that primer goes on there, it doesn't make the Nerf logo stand so out. Work to do. I'll show you guys what's on the table at the moment. I'm practically, like, living in the workshop. Let's see. You can see here, I've got, uh, I've got my shaker, I've got my banana, I've got my protein bar, and this is... Actually, a damn good protein bar. This is from a company in the UK, My Protein. Because I'm always on the hunt for new protein bars, and this shit tastes damn good. It curves the cravings. I'm trying to lose barley weight. She's, she's, <laughs> wow. So I've got these three mech helmets that I gotta, you know, clean up. I've gotta do some dremeling on them and start painting them. I at least want to get them all cleaned up, get the first coat of paint on, then start weathering them. I've also got two wearable mech helmet kits that I gotta clean up. So it's all happening, guys. But I'm really thrilled with how this is turning out it's just awesome to kind of go to town and just fuck shit up on something ah, and not make it look all me new, pristine ah. and neat so you know me what are you doing uh, huh? yeah, i think outside the box so with that being said let's lay the sand down we're gonna leave for yeah. 24 hours and then we can get to work yeah. detailing Over the there. terrain all right 
If you don't start sand, <coughs> start sanding this logo. I think the plastic dust is getting to the guys. <coughs> yeah, it's getting to me. Ah. Uh. <coughs> I'm gonna get some water. Ow! Mm. Alright, geeks, this turned out a lot better than I had anticipated. So, oh. we're, we're on the home stretch, so the next step is I want to sand <coughs> it's refreshing. The water along here because I do want right. to do a black trim along here. So, we're going to be using an orbit sander for that. So, I've got different grits there just under the lens cap. So, I've got 240, 80, and 180. Um, so you use uh, certain grits to get down to a really smooth uh, kind of finish, and this is a bit tricky. Um, Alright, I'm almost down to like that board. really smooth really type smooth surface, though. and it's looking great. It's looking awesome complete, so far. That Nerf logo shoot, is really going shoot, away, which is what I wanted down, in the first place. And we're going to cover all the sandy areas. Now, here's a test swatch that I did before. Now, I know it looks a little bit harsh and not exactly like a desert, but we're then going to go in with more sand and... Once it's all laid out, we're going to dump some extra sand over to soak up any moisture and soften soften the harshness of the <coughs> brown colour. Stop it, cat. Stop it. You don't have to sink your claws into everything. Oh, the dust is getting on my fingers, yes. Like, this dust from the sandpaper is getting everywhere. But I won't stop until this Nerf logo is gone on both sides, which is what makes it horrible. Nerf has got to figure it out. They don't want us customizing their toys, for God's sakes. That looks Previous great, guys. You guys should see polish, this right now. Down shoe polish. And I've just got to go over and give it another kind of brush with a dry brush just to get all the excess sand off before we do anything else. But it's just perfect. It's just, I've, I've wanted an uneven texture and surface. I kind of wanted to give the illusion that this is a dried out kind of environment as well. And the ship has been here for all right, So I'm going to get time. this now, dust off and see if now, the nerf loading, because I kind of don't want to make this all the way smooth, but I have stuff. to. I've got the <coughs> electrical wires here. So what I'm going to do is just use random parts of the red and black and also completely a respirator. the inner workings and put them on, say, different parts of the TIE Fighters' wings, uh, the debris, uh, even in parts of the sand, just so, you know, it shows there's inner workings to this TIE Fighter. It just gives uh, another sense of realism. So after that, it's time to do the charring marks around the debris and the surface itself. So it's going to be a combination of a matte black what are you doing? just spraying it in random areas and also a bit of airbrushing now i know some of you guys don't have an airbrush and it's totally fine you can do this by hand this airbrush is actually on its last legs i've got to go get a new one from super cheap auto probably sometime next week i've had this since 2011 so it's served me well but it's getting to the point where it's constantly clogging it's up. almost it's gone it's almost gone anymore. guys so this is perfect for this, um, oh shit, that's a tripod. <laughs> um, yeah, so after that, uh, we've got the combination of the spray paint and the airbrush to do all the charring marks and just highlighting some parts of the debris. I think I'm gonna go around and paint the black trim here. So I'm just using all right, so I've got like black, most of the students, um, kind of acrylic paint. <laughs> Some and of the dust still trying to come off. Call it a day, I've got I'm most of the Nerf logo spray, off. I just need to get two in over the uh, body of the type fire itself because it's looking a little bit glossy at the moment for my liking for something like i wish this would just go away like time, really like quickly wreckage, but this so is not that type of gun guys i'm really happy with how this has turned out i'm not gonna lie i completely winged it yeah get it um but yeah so we're <laughs> gonna do these final steps and we're gonna call it a day
Uh, Minu. You want me to send you, Minu? I'm gonna send you down. Yeah, this will hurt your claws. Here, try it. Yeah, it feels like your tongue, doesn't it? He's really trying to attack me right now. What happened? Guys! It is currently 2 o'clock. I started this, this live stream at like 1. Hold on. Alright, so here we are guys, still standing away, this is horrendous, this is kicking my butt. So thanks very much for watching guys, all in all, I'd have to say this is my most favorite custom collectible to date, I had a blast with this and I learned a lot. The Nerf the logo is really kicking me right now. So, all in all, the, um, have an amazing weekend. I the hope cold gun I built, it started off as this, silly. and it took me Until a few months time, to build please, because mainly, please mainly I put it off for it a long, long time, and I just stopped building the Nerf gun because I thought I would, I, I didn't think that I would have the actual time to put into building the cold gun, but it started off as this, and it turned into what you will see. I can actually show you right now because it was teased in one of my videos. Want to see it? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'll let you. My cold gun, it was teased in one of my videos. So I guess I'll go ahead and let you guys see it now. This is the cold gun. This is what it started from. My wang. Uh, you trolling me right now, bro? But no. This is what it started off as, guys, and this is the finished product. This is the finished cold gun. And uh, I even so much so, I went and I went ahead and put uh, LEDs in it. I went ahead and put LEDs in it. So there's the LEDs. This is the finished cold gun for my Captain Cold cosplay. I do want to find a way, however, to cover up this bottom. That way the insides aren't showing. That way somewhere to where I can just stick my finger in and turn off and on the code gun as I need it throughout a con because I got the leg I got a leg holster for it and everything you guys are gonna love it when the final reveal comes um I am gonna glue a bottle cap that I spray painted black right here so you guys can so no one can see the innards of it at a con so I'll have this ready by the time the next con comes when I go to Louisiana Comic Con so this bad boy is gonna be ready uh, to use and I can't wait I can't wait. I gotta seal it off with some paint sealer and it'll be, it'll be ready. You uh, put your finger at the bottom and you flip the switch and that's what turns on the LEDs. And um, I wired up this power box to the, um, to the LEDs so now it comes with two modes. Yo, Lan, leave the stream on me for about one more half hour if possible, or just do another one later. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna be streaming um for the next hour and a half. So uh, so Vegas, I I'll, I'll be here when you when you get back. Um, bro, stop trolling me right now. Uh, that's negativity I don't want in my stream. So please stop asking questions like that. Me new. Stop. No. Stop it. Stop. Stop it, cat. Don't meow at me. Yeah. It goes in the bottom, and uh, since I wired up my switch, I wired up my own switch, so the thing comes with two modes. It comes with, like, this little firing mode. That's what I call it. I call it firing mode, because when I pull the trigger, I can flip the switch, and that's what it'll look like, the firing. And then it comes with the solid 
colors, which is just one side of color. You can point it at someone and be like, I'm Captain Cold. Give me all of your lunch money. <laughs> oh. Where? Cat! It's my cat, guys. She keeps trolling me, too. I think she does it on purpose. Stop trying to eat me. I did nothing to you. Stop it. Ah. Stop. 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 Stop it. Stop. Ah. So, um, I wired them on Switch, guys, and this is the, um, the power box. This is the wires that I put inside it and started and so just basically soldered everywhere. And, uh, once it finished, the LEDs were able to light up. I couldn't find any LEDs that were blue, but it's fine because on the show sometimes it looks white. It doesn't look blue unless he actually fires it. So, winning. So, what we're going to go ahead and do is... Keep watching Cosplay Chris. I don't even know why why that was paused. What's happening, my fellow geeks and geekheads? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles. And today we're going to be pimping out the Jack Specific Deluxe right. R2D2 figure. So let's keep sanding. Like, I'm sanding down. Now, I'm, I'm sanding the, the, the crap out of this. I've gone ahead and taken him apart. And first and foremost, that was because I had to take him apart to get him back in the United States. I got back this morning. I'm a little bit jet lagged, a little bit dazed, a little bit confused. But the show must go on, and i got to get back to work. So, first and foremost, we have to prime all the surfaces. Stop now, it. The majority Stop. of the body. I'm just going to be using the flat grey primer for my stole now. However, for the dome itself, I still want to keep this metallic Stop sanding, finish. making noise. So we're going to be using a clear primer for yeah, the Yeah, when you sand, it's going to do that. It's going to make noise. I really don't have a choice but for the gun to make this noise while I'm sanding it. Stop it. We're going to be hitting it with some metallic rose gold also from rust We're going to let this sit overnight because we do have to mask off some areas with tape. And it's better to have this stuff. Almost the entire... The entire Nerf logo is gone, but the good thing is, is that this gun is old and the stock isn't there, so I don't have to sand away the Retaliator logo or any legal bullcrap, so I just have to sand away the two Nerf logos. All together, this took me about 15 minutes to sand away one logo. Let's get to it. Um, I would use paint thinner, I honestly would, that's the first thing I thought about, but then I thought, then I thought, you know, the Nerf logo is still going to stand out even when I prime it. So I want the Nerf logo completely gone because I want this to be a completely customized collectible. I want to weather it. I want it to look used. I want it to use, uh, look organic. Anything like that. Take the vids off of YouTube. Alright. So I almost got one logo off and then the other logo will be completely, it'll be a breeze because I'm going to use a fresh piece of sandpaper. I've been using this sandpaper um, since since I did the cold gun. Um, this is the last piece of sandpaper I used on that. So I'm using a completely fresh piece of sandpaper. I'm going to start over when I, um, when I do this other logo. That way it'll just be a breeze. It'll just be easier to do. No, me new. All right, so one logo is almost off, guys. This has been like, this has been kicking my ass. And I have until like four o'clock because I have to go into work. Somebody called me in and they want me to work their shift. So, um, hopefully my deal is once, uh, once I've become a successful enough YouTuber, I can actually quit my job and go full time with YouTube and, um, be getting paid with YouTube live stream all the time. Uh, that is my hope along with the, uh, DC superhero team that I'm making. So, uh, hopefully once we make enough money from that and make enough money from our prop making, we'll be able to quit our jobs and 
just make money being professional superheroes. That's my hope. So the next step is to do some hand painting, just little details, little panels. So I've got some chrome silver. Um, I've got Go some options brass and colored it. paint, some copper colored paint. Now, the brass color, I think, is an acrylic. Yeah, it is an acrylic because it's a lot more watered down, a lot more thinner than these guys, which are enamel. So I will be using this as a wash to kind of get in all the detail and start the weathering process. Whereas these two are a solid color when hand painted on. So mm. these are for doing, you know, little detail work that I can't really mask off and spray paint because it's just going to take way too long. Now, after that, we're going to try a brand new weathering process. Now, I don't know if uh, you guys right, saw so one of the live videos. I picked these um, rusted patina kits up from Hobby Lobby in LA. So this is going to be all new to me. It's trial and error. I don't know how it's going to go, but <laughs> we just got to wing it. So got the first, the first logo completely I'm gone. Going I'm gonna go ahead and fill it um, to make sure that's not standing also out. Panels just all over, especially the head. Okay, it so is completely really smooth, guys, and like the dust the just wants to stay on me. Weathering. So what you do is you lay down your primer wherever you want it to go. Once that's dried, you then put an iron cover over, and then you spray the rust effect on. Now this activates the uh, the rusting process with these two paints. After that, what are you doing? I want a patina look, like an oxidized look, as you guys can see right. Right there. Um, if majority of R2 is now copper and brass, that is what's going to happen uh, if you're exposed to moisture and dry heat and just um, unprotected metal. That's what's going to happen to it. So again, we've got a primer, we've got copper, and then we've got the spray that activates All right, so there the we go. So One logo is completely off. This took me about it's gonna go 30 minutes, and it way, was just kicking my something. ass. So just one logo to go. And I'm going to use a new piece of sandpaper. Yeah, you are about to meow at me, weren't you? What are you biting at me for? Don't bite at me. That's what I thought. Don't, don't claw at me in either. Alright. So I just cut out a new block of sandpaper, so getting through this second Nerf logo hopefully will be a breeze. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. It's hard sanding a new logo because all okay, the noise it the makes. Okay, weathering stage is complete. It's time to move on to the oxidizing and patina. As you can see here, I've done some tests right around here, and this stuff works amazing. So. You've got to place it in areas where there will be oxidization, a lot of moisture. I'm thinking around the perimeter here of where his head constantly turns. Also, <clears> the <throat> vents here, there will be some oxidization around this chip here. Just in random places. So, I'm really happy how this is turning out. Alright, so out, this guys. is. I'm really um, happy with this. See, this. This, has is, a this is a good end result. The the I kind of just wanted to be like, just like I said, it's like a throwback to the original R2. There is still evidence <coughs> of him still there. Apart from just going full steampunk and corporation, as you can see right there, it kind of makes it a bit bland. If I cover that up, it kind of just looks a bit bland, whereas this kind of just breaks it up a little. But we still want that weathering to all be uniform. So next up, we've got the copper color. Then once that's dry, we're going to spray the patina on, and that will activate the aging process, as you can see right here. Hey, sorry, guys. All right. I'm sorry, it's just... When you sand something, make sure you have a respirator. I don't have one. What are you doing, huh? Alright, geeks. I'm calling it a day on uh, the weathering process for R2. I mean, look at all those beautiful patinas. It's just come up a treat. I don't want to show you guys... The full, uh, the full body of him. Um, we'll wait till the reveal, but man, this stuff is amazing. Do wear a mask if you guys are attempting to use this product. Cause it is kind of stinky. I think obviously the paint itself does have metal, uh, metal powder in it. That's how the patina activates. So next up, we got some accessories. So. Some accessories. I've got this idea that he's like traveling the desert with his bandolier belt. So this is like the shoulder pad that's going to rest over this shoulder here. And it's got this little bandolier with little potions and just trinkets he's picked up. So these vials here, these three were filled up with some food coloring, as you see right here. And the final one is just filled with um, 
with plaster what powder, are you doing? Ultra Cow 30, like it's a little healing thing, like sodium benzoate or something like that. This is also a little trinket thing here. This is That's just cool. What are you doing with this figure? Believe it or not. So I just want this to be wacky and kind of just outlandish. So it's something so different. Now, all of these accessories were purchased from Hobby Lobby minus the leather. This is just spare leather I've had lying around. So I have started the whole bandolier process. So it's just a matter of lying it down, threading this over. Don't you dare. Down that don't you dare. Th that don't you think about it. You get a bandolier. Then I'll pop these vols out and weather up the leather. I'm going to use just Don't think wipes, about it, me new. Spritz it all around and wipe it down and sand it back. All right, back. so yeah, we've almost here, got it, like, completely sanded. I don't know if you can, guys can see the dust, wheel that like, that's has. falling so from it. this is just a crude wooden doll wheel I got from Hobby Lobby, and I use that same patina as this on the wood. You can see that lovely green there. And this is just an aluminium pipe that I've weathered with some... Uh, all right, so I've decided to fold this in half and just keep sanding from there because... Master's copper paint. It doesn't so get any better than that. Drilling a hole through here and just hey guys, if you do charge, want to sand something by hand, in place now. I mean, I would advise it because it gets it done, but I don't have like an actual machine slope. sander, so um, I can't do it as quick as I would if this were a, the base here is just a sander, a, bore a, hole a machine through. sander. I'm actually going to so. do some leather wrap around here. He's just, he's a very crude looking archer, guys. So if you guys ever want to come customize a Nerf gun, now you know the hassle. Uh, if you don't want the the logo on there, now you know the hassle of trying to get the logos off there. Mm. Sand horses. Ooh, somebody's in the the next room. I think they're using the bathroom. All right. What is with this cat? Alright. Oh, dude, this thing is like completely hot from all the sanding okay, I've just been very doing. Happy with how this belt is looking. Um, a few more accessories. The token steampunk octopus now. I do have to color this back a bit because this is how it came from Hobby Lobby. It's already oxidized. So I'm going to be placing him like so, just on the side like that. I will be ah. um, using these Ow. Um, tentacles here. So I probably will use the same patina as I have on the rest of the body. I'm going to kill so the cat. Uniform look. Now I do have the monocle. You want to get out of here? It, this is going to get really silly. So it's kind of like you as get if, out you know, his lens is scratched and damaged and... He needs a monocle to see properly. So this is how it originally came from Hobby Lobby. It's the randomest thing ever, but my God, it works really, hey. really well. And I also have a pocket watch. Now, I'm going to get an old vintage photo of C-3PO. I'll see if I can find a steampunk C-3PO and put a photo in the pocket watch just so it's like a little reminder for him. This is so silly, guys, but I'm having so much fun with it. This is an extra strap. It's going to go up this way so it can house the chain for the uh, pocket watch and the I think I'm going to show the link with a few other people. Okay, so I'm just crudely wrapping some spare brown what was uh, that? that I had lying around here. Just I just missed something in the video. Pocket. This is why I always watch his videos, because every time I watch it, there's okay, something I miss. So I'm just crudely wrapping some spare brown uh, pleather that had 
Alright, so the logo is almost sanded pump, and the dust is just all over my fingers. The base of R2, so I'm just charging the drill again, and uh, we're going to get a drill head that's similar to this thickness, not the exact same, because you um, you really just want to force it up in there. That sounds so wrong. <laughs> This thing looks great, right, guys. It's time to glue the monocle on, and I had to use this prior pen, which you guys have seen me use before, because I'm gluing metal to uh, polypropylene, even though it is. This thing is paint. completely I hot. To prime, I still had to prime yes. around here, also. I mean, that's kind of what I want, because so, I know so it's I'm just sanding. Be using regular Loctite, so fingers crossed it's this does Almost work gone, hold on. Right. Good to know my phone didn't go off. Alright. So I'm just blowing it that way so I don't get caught up in it again. Once again, and last time. I just gave it like the biggest blow I possibly could. That sounds so naughty. Alright, so it's just, a, once again, it's just the two ends that have to come off, and then we can get to priming. This is going to be very embarrassing. Huh. There you go. Okay, now that R2 is pretty much all complete, it's time to move on to the final step, and that is the base. Now, I'm going to be using methods that you guys are familiar with, but I'm also going to try something new to keep the theme of rustic steampunk. So, I've got some MDF board here. Oh, it measures right. 45 centimeters this way. I'm also going to measure 45 centimeters uh, this way. Who's ever so watching right now? I know you're probably getting now, caught. If it's Vegas, out, awesome. Because I know Vegas is, is truly committed to the channel. I'm going to be and I know you're probably getting tired of watching me sand, but I, I assure you, it is almost place. over. Now, once the whole base is complete, I'm going to be going over with the same patina kit that I used on R2 to make this oxidized and rusted. Now the familiar part, you guys know that I use the product called Trail, which is a thickened resin, so it's used to create mother molds, but today I'm going to be creating an uneven surface. It's going to be a desert thing because this is the idea that R2 has been going through the desert for quite some time. He's picked up things along the way but still keeping with the steampunk theme the aluminium around the side that has been oxidized and rusted so the first two steps are cutting out the mdf i'm going to cut these to size all right almost got the uh the n and the f down so yeah in case you guys are wondering now you know how it's done And my finger is like getting really tired, so I'm gonna use my other hand. God. I get away from it. Blow. Get away. Doesn't hurt to blow the other side again. Alright, so if you guys want to, I'm not going to do it. This is completely optional because I need to hurry up and prime this thing. Because whenever I, um, whenever I stream tomorrow, I wanna, I wanna, uh, have been able to start weathering this thing and making it look rugged and just. Mm. All right.
All right, so we're done with that. Blowing, get away. Blowing, get away. Blowing, get away. All right, so now that we're done with that, mm, there's still some dust that wants to come up. Now we're done with that, I'm gonna get a wet paper towel, wipe all of this down and grab the masking tape so we can mask off the parts, um, like the parts here that have the discoloration. Um, I'll probably tape off the barrel too because I want to make that a different color and just make this thing look like a space gun of some sort or like a hunter's gun that he bought from like a gun dealer or something like that. That way, um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, wet this paper towel and grab the uh, masking tape. All right, so I wet this paper towel, not enough to where it, it tears apart, but also drained it enough to where it's still like kind of wet. That way I can just wipe down this thing. The perimeter of the base here. Now we're going to be using the same patina kit that we used on R2 himself. So of course we've got the primer, copper, and the patina spray itself. And then once that's fully cured and the oxidizing process, you just want to go and stroke. The it sounds not everywhere. All right, I have a phone call. Hello? Hello? All right, that's just a telemarketer, guys. All right. Now, whilst the patina is drying in between coats, so I'm before I end this stream, I want to go ahead and start priming this thing. So, let me just wipe this down real quick. And we're going to need masking tape and tape off all the areas where I don't want paint, where I would like that discoloration to be. That way, I can start. I can start more discoloring, more discoloration, make it look rusted as possible. Just lightly starting to spray, and then it'll start to pool and drip like an oil leak. So I'm applying the masking tape where it, where it needed, guys. I'm going to ultimately apply a few layers. That way I know the primer doesn't try to bleed through and get to the plastic. And there's going to be a few areas where I'm going to tape it. And it'll look like really, really, um really messy that way I can go ahead and get a glove and blend some of that primer in to the actual paint job itself in fact there's a lot of trinkets in here a lot of gears in here that I can use and when I uh, when I get through with this thing it's gonna look really great him to shipping within Australia so if you guys want to contact me privately and you're in Australia if you are in Sydney or New South Wales that's even better um, you can contact me at cosplaychris at gmail.com I don't have a price in mind just hit me up with an offer just be reasonable I guess um, because I don't want to ship him worldwide first and foremost I get really worried about him traveling along the way whether or not he'll get damaged because I do know the postal service love to play soccer with my boxes that sounds really bad. <laughs> Guys, I hope...
hope you have a fantastic week. This Thursday, I'm flying down to Melbourne for Supernova this coming weekend. I can't wait. Going to get some great footage. So on the Saturday, I'm going to be Captain Boomerang. And on the Sunday, Pirate Batman. Hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are happy. Be merry. Right. Be silly. And until next time, geeks, please, always remember, cosplayers do it best. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put multiple layers on here across instead of up and down. That sounds so naughty. Alright, almost done guys, and then we can start priming the hell out of this thing. Alright, so we're going to tape off some more areas where I don't want there to be pink just yet. Why is the cat always doing that? I'm going to go ahead and tape off this barrel. What's happening, my fellow geeks and geekheads? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's, Chris's Custom, Custom Collectibles. Now today, we are going to be pimping out the Jack Specific C-3PO from Star Wars The Force Awakens. Q, you probably won't recognize me because of my red arm jokes. I have been searching for this guy for a very long time. A friend of mine by the name of Sam suggested that I should customize that guy. I said, dude, that's a great idea. I just can't for the life of me fucking find him. Flashback to a couple of days ago and hashtag my buddy Miles was out of the movies with his other half and said, hey man, I've seen the C-3PO. Do you want me to grab him for you? So I said, yes sir. And here he is in all his ugly injection molded plastic glory. Yes. We've got a lot of work to do. Now we're gonna be doing something different. Of course, you know we've got to take him apart, we've got to prime him. I do have to bore out this area here where the piston joints are so it's hollow. I am gonna be boring out his eyes here because hashtag my buddy Miles went that one step ahead and 3D printed some eye inserts. So an LED bulb is gonna go in the back there and illuminate through the front here, which is a fantastic idea. Like I went to pick him up and these were already 3D printed and finished and ready to go. So that is gonna be cool. Now the wiring system is gonna be a little bit different from my previous custom collectibles where I say have a battery pack hidden in the torso and we have the switch right. exposed at the back there. But in this case, I'm going to make this a whole stationary prop, which is then going to be plugged into a PowerPoint. Say, for example, a USB iPhone charger. It's a lot less messy. I could have cut this in half have, have I, had I just recorded this, but I decided to live stream it. So I think I kind of have to cut it here, guys, because this is going to take forever. So uh, if you guys do like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with all your cosplay friends. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for all things superhero related on this channel. And until next time, I am a fun guy, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. I'm the weathering guy. So we're going to go to town making him look.